What better way to celebrate seasonal eating than with fresh and abundant ears of corn? Indigenous people of both North and South America have been cultivating and celebrating corn for thousands of years. And in the grand timeline of history, it's only very recently that Europeans have been consuming this grain as a result of the Colombian exchange. Welcome to the Backwoods Kitchen. I'm your host, Holly Benison, and on today's episode, I'll be preparing one of my favorite recipes from the Female Emigrant's Guide, Green Corn Patties. Corn, of all things, had differing worldviews associated with it in 1850s Upper Canada. Traditionally, corn, beans, and squash were planted together according to the indigenous system of three sisters planting. These vegetables, native to North and South America, supported the growth and fertilization of one another, allowing these crops to grow and protect each other on small mounds. Settlers would have learned from this form of companion planting and is one of the many ways in which settler and indigenous food knowledge and practices intertwined. The recipe also connects to the strange relationship between corn, labor, and the weird ways in which this challenged gender in Victorian Canada. Typically defined as a masculine job, the planting and maintenance of corn was largely the responsibility of the men in the household. It wasn't until the final harvest that women were typically involved in harvesting and processing the corn for winter, as well as in organizing husking bees, large community gatherings to process corn for winter. What happened if your husband was ill or otherwise busy? The planting of corn then became a woman's responsibility, and for new settlers with a very traditional sense of the division of gendered work, this proximity to masculine labor was often a jarring and uncomfortable introduction to life in the bush. Domestic or any kind of hard labor was considered a masculinizing activity for women, but engaging in a variety of work outside of the norm was essential to survival in the bush, regardless of gender. Emigration as a practice challenged these beliefs as new form of female labor were essential to survival and comfort and became a new way that women could control the management and production output of the household. This was very characteristic of life in Canada and stood in direct contrast to the expected gendered labor divisions in the primarily Anglo settler demographic. Once all the corn has been grated, we can add in the rest of the ingredients. We have salt and pepper to taste, flour to give a body and an egg to help keep it all together. The batter might look a bit runny now, but the egg solidifies on the hot skillet very quickly, which helps the pancakes hold their shape and cook through without falling apart. So, like I've mentioned already, this is one of my favorite recipes from the FEG, and I've made it a whole lot of times, so I know exactly how it tastes, but let's taste test anyway. It's so much better over a fire. This one is a super duper easy recipe, so if you want to get into Canadian culinary history, you want to test this one out, it is so simple, I would recommend giving this one a shot. 